Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Steady Focused. I'm your host, I'm your number one, Mr. Simeon Hendricks. And today, guys, we got something special. We're bringing in Mr. Matt Haddon. He's a president of Pioneer Belts and General Leathercraft Manufacturing. Pioneer Belts makes some of the best powerlifting, weightlifting belts in the entire world. And their belts are used and have been used to break multiple, multiple world records. I'm talking thousand pound squats. So guys, I'm really excited for this. Join the conversation, talk with us. Um, we're gonna be exploring subjects such as entrepreneurship, hardships, success, and what it's like to, to live right here in Texas. So please help me give a big, steady, focused welcome to my friend, Mr. Matt Haddon. Hey. Hey, how's it going? It's going great, man. Uh, I know this is a busy time of year. We're, we're what, just like a, a couple of weeks away from Christmas. Yes, sir. So I'm, I'm sure you're just going nuts right now. The crew and I have worked extremely hard. Um, our customers have shown massive amounts of support, which is... I mean, it's unbelievable uh, through, a, through a tough year um, to end it uh, on a good note uh, with a busy Christmas season is, is a blessing for sure. Yeah, man, I, I can imagine. I was just thinking as we were getting ready to, to set up this interview and we had reached out to our, our friend Curtis. He helped line all this up. And then I was like, oh, my gosh, I, I don't even know if Matt's going to have a spare second to talk to us. So thank you for, for coming on, man. Thank you. I appreciate, appreciate the invite. Hell yeah, dude. Let, let's do this. Let, let's get in our time machine, okay? Let's go back to 1978, Sydney, Nebraska. All right, let's imagine there's a, there's a traveling salesman. He's, maybe he's going door to door. Maybe he's going business to business. And he's selling nylon and leather belts. And that man is your grandfather. Tell us a little bit about him. What was your grandfather like? So he's still alive. He's 90 four now um he's still kicking it still has an incredible personality uh he's he's a good man um his legacy lives on through obviously my mother and father that took over the business uh i mean back then can you imagine i mean no internet no the hell i don't even think they had fax machines so i mean it was it was cold calls face to face with and i to my knowledge back then every little town had a sporting goods store for their you know, their high school football team to order uniforms and their baseball team to order, you know, hats and that sort of thing. So um, he, he would have to go, you know, Western Nebraska, Northern Colorado, Eastern Wyoming was kind of his territory. And he would just travel and try to sell. I think back then we did do uniforms and hats and, and then obviously belts. And, and it just would have been it would have been extremely hard. You know, now with the Internet, the world's gotten much smaller. Um, no traveling salesman anymore. You can do everything via, via a website or yeah. email or social media, whatever the case may be. Um, so I'm definitely blessed to live in this era. Uh, I'm not near as good face to face as my grandfather or my father uh, was, is. So third generation. So it started with your grandfather um, and then it went to your father and now you, your father and your mother, and, and now you're running it. Right. Um, why did your grandfather choose to go nylon and leather belts? You know, I would assume there was a market for them and no supply. So, um, you know, weightlifting was was fairly large in the 80s. Um, I think, you know, the old old school guys, I mean, we're talking Schwarzenegger, Frank, you know, Frank Zane, um, some of those kind of guys, they were, they were lifting weights. I mean, they were lifting big weights back then. And there wasn't anybody in the United States really making these. There was one in Canada, I think, Altus, maybe. Um, Enzer came around, I believe, in the early 80s. Titan, I think, followed somewhere off in there. Um, but as far as manufacturing goes, there really wasn't um, weightlifting belts. There really wasn't anybody. I don't okay. know if he recognized that opening and took advantage of it. Uh, I would love to have that conversation with him. Yeah. But... Um, you know, my, grand, my, my father took it over about eight years after, I think, after the business started. And he, he took it and ran um, 
in the mid eighties, we moved to El Paso when I was just a baby, sort of in 87, um, moved to El Paso, which is where the manufacturing was done and started selling from there. Um, but, and you're, you're still going door to door at this point or how were you guys getting your sales? I mean, I think at this, at that point he probably had a customer base established, um, some other retailers. We, we, for the most part, even up till whenever I started, third-party manufacturing was our bread and butter. So somebody, a big company, say they say they sold to Target or Walmart. Um, you know, they would reach out to us. We would make belts for them. We would put their logos on them, and then they would distribute them via retail stores across the country. Um, so we always made belts, but very we never made pioneer belts. We never made okay. custom belts. Really, they were all just basic inexpensive products that uh, people could resell and you know the the influx of the pakistani and chinese market in the late 80s early 90s uh, they kind of infiltrated the fitness industry um, and really hurt i think a lot of the manufacturers especially the ones that weren't going straight retail so they you know they my company our company had to kind of shift and either either make them cheaper or make them better, um, we chose better because we couldn't yeah. compete with foreign, you know, prices. Um, so we started, you know, really focusing on quality, and you know, we started the lifetime guarantee. Um, we made some changes in the products that allowed for us to charge, you know, at least where we were charging, um, and still be able to make those sales. So yeah. it was uh, that was a that was a big change. I, you know, my father and mother went through good times and hard times through their time here. And thank God for them because, you know, we I wouldn't even have the opportunity to be able that to was, do what we do now. So that was one thing I wanted to talk about was the hard times. I, In preparation for this, you know, I was reading through interviews that you had done in the past. And you did talk about how you were... Um, the respect and the admiration you had for your parents and your grandfather for persevering through the hard times. So what was it like, you know, as a child watching them, you know, suffer, struggle, go through that? You know, when I was young, when we lived in El Paso, so we moved to Coleman when I was nine. Um, Obviously so young, you don't really understand, you know, what's going on in your parents' lives. Um, I do know, you know, talking to them and and talking about the past that, you know, through my young childhood, everything was pretty good. Uh, we actually had some sort of contract with, I don't know if you remember this, I don't know how old you are. Um, the guys at like Home Depot, Lowe's that used to wear the nylon belts with the suspenders on them. Yeah. Well, o- yeah, yeah. OSHA, OSHA, the you know, Occupational Safety and Health Administration, made that mandatory that if anybody, you know, consistently lifted over 20 pounds, they had to have back support. Okay. And we, to my knowledge, we had 80, 90 employees working, you know, 12 hour shifts, we're running 24 hours a day, um, making these things by the semi truck load. What? So when I was a kid, I think everything was pretty good. Um, okay. I know we had an economic downturn sometime in the eighties, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, and then they had to deal with, uh, the one crisis, uh, you know, like I said, it was just been a roller coaster. You know, you just try to stay on the upside as as long as you can, because uh, you know what goes up must come down, kind of deal. Yeah. Uh, I haven't really had to experience that in my time here at Pioneer. We've just been climbing the ladder. Um, when I started, we had seven employees. Now we have over thirty. Um, wow. We've we've progressively just gotten bigger and and better in in the seven and a half years or eight years that I've been here now. Um, What's so go ahead. Well, yeah. So, so here you are a third generation family run business right here in Texas. You guys are growing worldwide. What is it like to be competing with some of these bigger manufacturers, uh, that are, that are in the powerlifting weightlifting world? You know, I don't, I don't, I don't really, or, think or is it not I, even I, I hate to say it, but I don't yeah, even think, yeah. I don't think about them. I love it. Um, I love it. When I first started, you know, I, I tried to keep tabs on everybody, but we've gotten so busy now that I, I mean, I don't know what everybody else is doing. Yeah. Um, we just try to focus on what we do. Uh, 
at this point, I try to tell my crew all the time that, you know, you know, all of us individually may not mean much, but all of us as a team, we're the best of what we do. And yes. I, mean, I don't want to say that in a, in a, you know, brash bragging kind of way, but, um, those are not my words. You know, those are words of thousands of customers that have told us, you know, that, you know, they've tried every belt and ours is the best. And yeah, so I try to take that to heart without a big head, instill that into our crew, my children, everybody that's involved with our business. Um, you know, we don't, we don't just help ourselves. You know, there's a lot of people, our, our, our vendors, you know, people that we, buy leather from and suede from and buckles from you know those, these people are all are, are all benefiting from you all support too yeah. and you know that's extremely important to me i thoroughly enjoy thinking about as you know as much support as we've gotten how much we're able to help not only just our business but other small businesses here in america and that's why i think being made in america is um i mean it's extremely important it is, man, and, and just like you were saying, the uh, the reputation. So I'm I'm part of the Kronos Strength. It's a team, weightlifting team, a powerlifting mm -hmm. team, strongman team here in Wichita Falls, and yeah. So a year or so ago, I was ready to buy my my first belt as an adult. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I lifted in high school, and things. You know, I went around the world, and now it's time to come back to lifting. Sure. And so I'm asking the guys, like, where do I go? What do I do? And everyone's saying pioneer, pioneer. I was like, what is pioneer? And then I start researching. I see your YouTube videos where you're dissecting belts all, you know, from all different manufacturers and honestly evaluating. Yeah, this belt is really good for this, this and this reason. And I thought, man, th these guys are doing something really good. And then I start just falling in love on your Instagram. Talk about how you feel when you make a custom belt and, and yep. talk about even the wild, you know, describe to these people that maybe not have seen this, some of the belts that you create. There's uh we'll keep it family friendly. Cause there's, so <laughs> when, when I, the very first belt we made, it was a, it was a fuchsia belt and it had blue text and it said muscle chick. And it was from a gal from Canada. Um, she emailed out of the blue one day, we had barely just gotten the website started and she emailed out of the blue saying, Hey, I want to, I want you to make a belt and I want you to put my name on it. Well, at that time, you know, I, I wasn't going to say no, um, because, you know, saying no doesn't get you anywhere. Uh, you at least got to try. And, you know, I thought, give me a couple of weeks. Let me figure this out. I ended up figuring out, finding somebody with an embroidery machine, getting a couple of pieces of suede embroidered and, you know, making this belt. And it was the very first one. And it turned out pretty poor looking back on it. Okay. Um, you know, it was the first one, but it was, yeah, you gotta start. It was you something gotta start. that I was still proud of. And I realized that, you know, if we can do this, we can start putting Bible verses. People can start drawing strength and showing their, you know, their identities through their belts people do this right so yes. people dr dress certain ways um it's all about individuality and advertising yourself these days you especially go. social media it's extremely important for a lot of people to build their own personal brands yeah we give them the ability to do that while they're at their outlet for stress relief for health reasons whatever it is you know in the gym and I think people just took to that, you know, especially in the power thing world, there really wasn't anybody doing custom belts that would put, you know, crazy stuff on there or pictures, um, anything of that nature. And, you know, I, I wish I could sit here and tell you that, you know, I, I knew that there was an opening there and this is what we need to do. And, and this is, and we're going to go after it. I didn't know that. Um, but once that one came about, I started, we got on social media. My wife talked me into get on Instagram. I started following, I started getting on Instagram and, and following all these really strong powerlifter people. And what I did is I started reaching out to people. I mean, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people with, you know, followers okay. anywhere ranging, ranging from 5,000 to 500,000. I just shot them DMs. Hey, I don't want you to shout us out. I just want you to give me honest feedback on the product. You guys tell me what you want. We'll do our best to make it. And you let me know what we can improve on. 
Um, you know, we started out reaching out to a guy, Kevin Oakley, Oak Strong. And if you're in powerlifting, you probably have heard of Kevin. He's yes. like a four time, all time world record holder squat. I think he squats, you know, mid 800s at 220, 242. <sighs> um, he set me up with a guy named Larry Williams, which is Larry Wheels. I mean, he's, he's gotten massive now on social media, but we, we were making belts for him from the time he was 18 to 22. And then now he started his own brand. You know, and those guys are just kind of snowballed into being able to reach out and talk to, you know, extremely influential people in the fitness market. Mike Rashid, okay. C.T. Fletcher. Um, oh, you C.T., know, you, you're, yeah. you know, you work with C.T.? Yeah, I mean, we've made C.T., his son, a couple of different belts. C.T., you know, I've texted him and called him several times. Oh, um, man. You know, Mike O'Hearn. Uh, man, Jay Cutler, wow. Phil Heath. I mean, we've made some belts for some pretty, pretty – awesome people um who's, and that's just in the fitness world you know there's, who's there's, somebody who's someone that when they put in the order or when they call you or they tell you email you have you ever been like are you kidding me this person have, have you been awestruck i think the, the last time i actually was like kind of giddy about an order that came through um the strength coach for the tampa bay buccaneers called and wanted us to make you know i think it was 14 or 16 belts um, for them. And I thought that was cool, you know, because think about it, you know, they're not, they're not strength athletes, but they're some of the best athletes, if not the best athletes in the world. Um, yes. and they have, you know, a budget that doesn't really, you know, keep them from ordering who from whoever they want. And yes. they, you know, they called us and it just, you know, those kind of things, it, it makes you feel proud, um, of doing what you're doing. And, you know, it just kind of keeps that fire lit and you just keep going. I'm going to pull up your, um, right here, I've got your Instagram pulled up. I just want to kind of show people some of these belts. Like this one right here, you look at this. Um, it, it, can you see this, Matt, what yeah, we got pulled yeah. up on the screen? Uh -huh. So this looks like it's rattlesnake skin. It is, that it is te Texas rattlesnake. We buy, we go to the Sweetwater Rattlesnake Roundup every year and buy a bunch of skins from a local sourced guy. And... Um, yeah, and the, the actual material that it's inlaid in is, is, is a water buffalo. Uh, it's called Crazy oh Horses. The finish, it's a pull-up side. And it's, that's one of our most popular exotic belts. Uh, so our Instagram page, you know, it morphed. I mean, it really, was, it really was never just a strict business page. It was always just me, you know, showing my family and what we do and some of the cool stuff that comes out of the business. And then, you know, we've got crazy videos in there about, oh, you know, yeah. people – I don't know. It's almost a game now. I think customers will yeah. order a belt and then put something ridiculous in the comments for us to do, like a skit or, you know, punt my belt into the FedEx truck whenever it ships, you know, that kind of thing. And uh, yeah. we have fun with it. It actually is something that it kind of, it's almost team building exercises when that kind of stuff happens. Um, we bring everybody in and anybody that wants to be in one of those Instagram skits, um, they enjoy it. The customers enjoy it. And, you know, it just yeah. kind of brings a little bit of lightheartedness to the, to the social media. Man, it's your, yeah, your belts are just, ugh, wow. I love it. Yeah. And like you're saying, so you guys go on their Instagram, Instagram.com pioneer underscore fit. And you can see, so yeah, like Matt's saying, you know, when someone orders their belt, there's like a box and it says special instructions and you'll say, like I saw one on there. It's like uh, they were doing like an anime belt and, you know, they typed something about that. And then you guys like bowed to it or, you know, just all kinds of fun stuff. So it, oh, oh, go ahead, please. I was going to say that that stuff is just, it's fun for us. So it's it's not we do it. Yes, because they ask for it. But at the same time, there's several of us out there that that truly enjoy doing those. And it's, you know, the production value is not very good, but it it gets the point across that we're, that we're having fun with what we're doing and yeah, you know, it's true. It's truthful. So you're, you're going along the path. You're, you're creating these world renowned belts and then you come across, I want to make sure I'm saying this right. We, you come into the, you create this something brand new called the pioneer cut for years, <laughs> forever. It's just been, one hole, I, and is it right? An inch, a hole, an inch, and then typically they do it at inch centers. Yeah, and then you create. You're like, 
why don't we do what is it half inch quarter inch what is that they're half inches um and honestly i'm not going to take credit for this uh, i have a business partner named steve strong he actually came up with the idea we came up with how to implement that idea um okay and it it kind of flipped the belt world upside down. Uh, there's lots of copycats now from overseas. You know, we're, I can we're still under patent pending. Um, hopefully we'll get full patent protection pretty soon. But um, it's, it's just something that everybody was like, how did we not think of that? And I was the same way. I mean, we, we, at that time, I mean, I was four years deep into making 30, 40,000 belts a year. Never even dawned on me. Steve yeah. hit me up via email had some like rough sketches and drawings like, Hey, do you think you can make this work? Yeah. You know, I'm not going to say no. Right. So yeah. I was like, yeah, give me, give me a little bit. Let me see if I can figure this out. And, um, uh, they punched two single rows offset a little bit. And it turned out great. And we shot it on like a video on Instagram and it had like 20,000 views in like an hour. So we took it down and we we're like, Oh shit, this is something that <laughs> this is, so this is get a lot of orders. This is big. Yeah. So, uh, we took it down, uh, called the lawyers, got it, you know, all the patent stuff all lined out. Um, you know, business relations with Steve is still extremely good. He's, he's an awesome dude. Um, and from that point forward, you know, single prongs and double prongs, they were almost obsolete. And, you know, we started making belts for some really big retailers. And, you know, if you have a belt out there now, a powerlifting belt, and it doesn't have a staggered hole, um, I mean, you're, you're honestly, you're missing out I mean, because you, really are. I mean, you have an ill fit, an ill fitting belt. Yes. You may have a perfect fitting belt one day, you know, and then you might drink a Coke or have a big meal and your one, one hole is too loose and one hole is too tight and it, and it doesn't fit right. You can't brace properly. It's not as safe. Um, not only that, it's uncomfortable. Um, yeah, those one inch spacings they're they're they still serve their purpose. Double prongs are still there. People still think that they are, more durable, you know, strength wise, maybe they set and sit in the buckle and not have as much play, um, super minor details, but uh, it is, it pales in comparison to the pioneer cut. And it, you know, that was, pardon my pun, but we, we kind of, you know, obviously we pioneered that and it was, uh, yeah. it was a big deal. And so I'm guessing, was it, you guys were going down, the, maybe it was Steve that you had mentioned, uh, you're going down this route and then you're like, what about people that have the le um, the lever belts? And then yes. this is something that is. Yeah, the PAL, Pioneer Adjustable Lever. So SBD came out with their belt that didn't need a screwdriver, I don't know, two years ago maybe now? Okay. Maybe two and a half years ago. And <clears throat> when they came out with it, excuse me when they came out with the with their belt <clears throat> i felt like they left a lot on the table and a lot to desire because they forced customers to order a 212 for whatever a 200 i mean i think it was 270 when it came out it's probably down to 210 dollar belt when really all they wanted was the lever mm -hmm. um so in my brain automatically i was like we've got to have a lever that fits all of these belts that have been out and made for the last 30 years. Yes. Um, Inzer patent, uh, patented their lever, the one that everybody uses. And, you know, for 20 years, they were the authority in the business because of that lever. And the patent ran out. Everybody started carrying the same lever, you know, maybe not the exact same, but same design. So they all had the same hole patterns. So I knew it was possible to come up with a way to have micro adjustments or I didn't know it was possible. I thought it would be possible. I wasn't smart enough to figure it out. So I got with, with an engineer um, and we worked and worked and worked for, I don't know, 18 months trying to develop the, the, the PAL and it finally dropped this year. And you know, the first thousand sold out the first day. Uh, the second thousand when it came out sold out in two days and we're expecting the third thousand to come out um, to be the, that batch to be ready right around Christmas. So um, it works, it works extremely well. Uh, it, yeah. it, it doesn't totally alleviate the screwdriver, but it does, it doesn't totally eliminate the screwdriver, the use of a screwdriver, but it does alleviate. Um, so if you want to wear your belt, 
tight for squats like most people do and maybe a little bit looser for deadlifts, you're fine. Um, you, you can use the PAL without using a screwdriver and get perfect tightness every time. Uh, it works really good. 13 millimeter belts, 10 millimeter belts. I mean, there's, there's been a few issues um, that will get shored up. Uh, just kind of like the first version of the Apple, you know, it always, it always has bugs, but um, it'll, uh, it'll continue to get better. Um, we'll use customer feedback and we'll use, um, you know, findings on our own to continue to tweak this design a little bit, um, staying yeah. within the patent, you know, it's patent pending too. So it's, um, it's been, it's been a wild ride. I've been, I knew it was coming in 2020. It was a nice boost from a, a terrible, yeah. you know, March, April when everybody found out about COVID. So, right. I mean, and I, I missed out on the, the pal for the first yeah. run. A lot of guys yeah, in the team got good. it and they're, they're blowing up and they're like, Oh my gosh, you got to get one of these. So I cruise over to the site. All right, I'm ready. He was like, no, you know, of course it's sold out. Just like you, you know, of course yeah. anything amazing gets bought up. So whenever the next wave comes out, I'm going to be, I bet, I, can, I bet I can find one for you and just shoot me an email after the skill. <laughs> well, hey, man, you, even if it's one that <laughs> fell off of a, of a ship or whatever along the way. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm excited for that. So, I mean, uh, so here you are. Um, how did, well, okay. So your family's into weightlifting. You guys are entrepreneurs. You guys are, uh, you're, you're filling a need. Are you a, a lifter? Is this something that you love? Are you, are you passionate about this? Is it like physically, I've, actively? I've always considered myself an athlete through high school. Played, okay. Yeah, you know, I played co collegiate golf and I played professional golf, which I don't know. You know, being an athlete and being a golfer is probably not the, you know, the greatest connection. But uh, I've always tried to stay physically active. Um, when I first started um, here, I, I I thought to myself, nobody's gonna because I didn't powerlift. I thought to myself, okay. nobody's going to buy a belt from somebody who wasn't a powerlifter. So okay. I went all in eight months or so. I was, you know, getting stronger. Okay. Yeah. You know, I, I busted my back and, um, about a year and a half of struggling to even move, pick up, you know, I had, you know, the twins were just babies. Uh, I could barely pick them up and ended up having back surgery. And my days, my days of, of, you know, trying to lift heavy, was over before it really even started. So, Whoa. um, I try to stay active, you know, we have a gym in the house and, or in the barn and, um, you know, I, I lift casually, um, I, just to stay healthy for the, for the family more than anything. Yeah. Man, that, it was reminding me, um, we were talking, you, you were mentioning, will they, you know, kind of, uh, are they going to believe me? Will they buy for me if I'm not, you know, an imposter almost, you know, like, well, I'd be looked like right. I'm an imposter. I'm just kind of showing up. And, you know, that, that kind of got me thinking uh, about uh, something I've been meditating on is about like deserve, you know, do I deserve something? And, you know, so uh, along your route, you know, have, have you felt like, um, you know, like just giving up, you know, just stopping this when, or has the momentum been so strong for you that there, there's no, no doubt? You know, I, giving up is probably not the right word. Um, I have gotten stressed out um, and for no real reason. So, I mean, I battle, um, you know, not to have like any a pity party, but I battle with depression and I, and I have, certain feelings about certain things that, you know, sometimes they don't go away and you know, that black cloud kind of stays over me a lot. Um, I try to hide it as best I can. I really just swallow it and keep going. Um, one of my biggest fears in life is being a failure. So, you know, being motivated is never really an issue, especially uh, in business. You know, also, you know, in family is one thing that, you know, I don't want to be a, you know, a deadbeat dad. I don't want to be somebody where the kids, when they get older, you know, are, not proud of me. You know what I mean? So, wow. um, as far as motivation goes, it's not, it's not anything. Um, there's, there's no lack of it, I guess you can say. So quitting is never, I mean, it's just not who I am. Man, the, the, the pressure or the, the drive to succeed for our children, man, isn't that something? 
It really is. People that don't have children don't understand it either. Cause I mean, it's, I mean, it's quite literally as soon as you hold them, you're like, I'm not living my life for myself anymore. Everything yeah. changes and it's, it's a beautiful thing. It, it, it makes you a better person or it should. I mean, it did me. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, you know, kids, you know, I've got four little boys now and they're beautiful and they're healthy and I've got a beautiful wife and, you know, just I'm blessed beyond measure. And that keeps me going too. You know what I mean? So, I mean, yes. Do I feel, do I, I struggle with, I have things. Do I feel like I deserve them? Sometimes no. I mean, sometimes I feel like I'm just lucky. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, and, I, and I try to ground myself and, and, and make myself realize how hard I worked when we first started, um, mm -hmm. you know, the hurdles that we jumped, the, the late nights and staying, you know, sleeping next to the embroidery machines and sewing until four o'clock in the morning and sleeping very little with twins at home, little baby twins okay. at home. And Let, let's go there. Let's go to that moment where you're putting in all this work and maybe a lot of people, or let's go to the moment where, when Matt is running the ship, when you guys are at a, maybe your, your least amount of, um, notoriety. You're at the moment where not so many people know you are. Do you, at that time, are you feeling like, damn it? Why don't people know about what I'm doing, you know, or, and why is everyone talking about this company or this company? Why are they not talking about us? Or are you recognizing like, Matt, you got to put in the work, dude. Like what's your mindset? So putting in the work was always my thing. I mean, I, I, I enjoy that grind. Um, and especially with the kids being super young, that was, that was my thing. I knew that if the reason I came back to the family business, you know, I was, I was in the golf business at the time, making very little money, being told what I was worth, um, which wasn't very much, which is, you know, kind of a downer. Um, the drive, the, what drove me to come back was the fact that being an entrepreneur, being a business owner, nobody tells you what you're worth. You get in what you put out of, or, mm -hmm. I mean, so you get out of what you put in and it's something that still to this day, and I'll try to instill it in my children and in my, you know, our employees, you put in the work, you're going to get out what you, what you deserve out of it. And you know, when the kids were super young, so I started in 2013, um, full time at Pioneer. Uh, the boys were born early 14. So I had about, well, I mean, while Reagan was pregnant pretty much that whole time, I, gr I, mean, I grinded. And we're talking about, like I said, hundreds and hundreds of DMs to people that may or may not even look at them, uh, trying to get our name out there. It happened fairly quick. It happened quicker than then um then really again whether i deserved it or not um so when i started in 13 we didn't have a website i fought with mom and dad i think we should go retail you know wholesale business you do a whole lot of work don't make it you know very much money um you you know you put hours and hours and hours in and you barely are able to make ends meet yeah you go retail you know, the margins are a little bit better. You can, you know, you might make the same amount of money on one belt as you would on four belts wholesale. So I thought that was the, you know, that dad and I didn't see eye to eye on that. I'm glad that I pushed and pushed and, and he, um, he conceded because when we switched and started going retail and I was starting to get some traction via social media, you know, we got a couple thousand followers and then that jumped to 10,000 followers and jumped to 40, 50,000 followers and then all the way up to wherever we're at now. Um, incrementally social media has helped us mm. an, an unbelievable amount and any young entrepreneur out there, you're an old entrepreneur, anybody that's starting a business, take advantage of social media because it's free and you get to connect with people that you may or may never be able to talk to outside of it and utilize it, make people know who you are um, show who you are through your social media. Don't be fake. You know, there's, there's too much fake in this world right now anyways. So show it, show who you are. People, people gravitate and, and respect real, you know what I mean? Authenticity. So, yes. And, and I think that's, I think that's why we've gained so much traction along with, you know, some of the cool stuff that we do. Yeah. But um, I mean, I like to think that people can we know that I connect with my customers on more Absolutely. than just a, prof a professional level. Yeah. Um, 
And and it's but, it's like the the trifecta. It's the quality, it's the personality, you know, being real, and then it's the fun. So mm-hmm. you you like got it all right there. Oh man. So that woman, the pink leather belt that was uh what did it say? Uh Mus- muscle chick. Muscle chick. Is that going in a museum someday? I you know, I reached out to her maybe last year, early this year, and we remade her belt. The exact same one. It's on social media. I don't know how long ago it's been now, but we remade it. Okay. It was a lot better. It was a lot better the second time. Um, but no, I'll never forget that belt. No, it's not in the museum anywhere, but I'll never forget it. It's right here. Really? Talk about the Pioneer Open that we got coming up in 2021. And you, it's a massive powerlifting meet, and you're looking at doing some strongman stuff there as well? Yeah, so we started the tribute. So my whole thing is supporting those who support us. There's a lot of federations out there that take a bunch of money and the athletes never see that money. So the athletes powerlifting in particular put a lot of effort and time into perfecting their craft and they get an acrylic $4 trophy at the end of the day. And I don't, I don't like that. I I like to see the big meets, the U S open, the, the, the current, whatever it's called, um, you know, where they're, where they're dropping a couple hundred thousand and these guys are going all out and actually have a chance to make some real money. Uh, it almost feels like a real sport at that point. Um, and I saw that and I thought to myself, I want to do that. I want, I want to show how much I appreciate the community. So the first year of the tribute, we, we put $60,000 into the, into the prize pool. And the tribute was in San Antonio. Um, three years ago now it went really well got a lot of traction there's a I mean, world records were broken Andre Malenichev and you know Ben Pollock and Kevin Oak and I mean it was the Daniel Bell Luke Nall I mean it was literally the who's who of power uh, CC Holcomb uh, Mariana wow. Gas Ga- I always screw up her last name Gasparana I think maybe um, some it's the strongest people in the world were there uh, strongest mm-hmm. powerlifters in the world and it went really well. We did it again. We put in 50,000, I think two, two years ago. Um, I got kind of, I got turned off by doing the upper echelon because there was a lot of drama. Um, I didn't like the, I didn't think that I was the right vehicle, the right driver for that particular meet because I would reach out to our competitors, people that, you know, we may be leaving behind and asking them for money to donate to the lifters. And I, you know, coming from me as a competitor of theirs, it probably didn't sit very well. And I didn't think about that when I first started, I just wanted help. Um, then I started to realize, you know, somebody else could take this over and make it bigger than what I can, um, you know, cause I can't personally put in, you know, $250,000. I just don't have, I don't have the funds. Um, but I, I thought, you know, somebody else driving could muster up more sponsors than I could to be able to give back. Uh, so we gave it to a company called Eat Right Foods out of New York. They did it uh, last year, changed the name to the showdown. And I think it was well. I think it did well. I think they had sixty or $70,000 in it, uh, a lot of big names. Uh, and then, you know, the COVID was shortly after that. So this year, 2020, July, I think it was in July 11th, somewhere right in there, we did a scaled-down version uh, it was an open meet we called it the pioneer open. It was, a, it was an open meet where anybody could join uh, because yeah, giving back to the upper echelon is always has its place. And I, and I still donate to, you know, certain things like that, but I wanted to be able to have Daniel Bell come down. Who's, you know, at this point he's the strongest man. I think he still is strongest powerlifter in raw and classic raw, you know, sleeves, no oh. sleeves, uh, okay. sl- sleeves and wraps. I'm sorry. Um, he broke the all-time world record in both. He was there competing alongside people that are just now. I mean, did, that was their first powerlifting meet. And I thought that'd be cool. It'd be like me playing a round of golf with Tiger Woods and, and, yeah. and, com- yeah. and competing against him. And um, so I thought that that aspect was really cool. I also wanted to move it to Coleman where we're located because I knew it would help the local economy. Um, it would bring people to the shop. It would bring people to you know where we are. Uh, it turned out really well. I think we donated 20000 I think we ended up raising 26,000. I didn't, I didn't try for sponsors this year. Um, but people did reach out, go strong. Uh, Casey Mitchell at rising labs, depth before dishonor. There's several, um, 
companies that are that are all in on helping and those are the companies that i always try to you know support you know support those who support you uh next year we're going to do the same thing uh we'll try to donate as much money as we can it's kind of dictated by the, you know how well the year's going um but the venue that we have here in coleman is actually there's an event center which is just a big open space and then there's what we call the gory center where we have like our uh, like stock show it's a big uh packed dirt floor with stands and it's just a big open area and we're going to put um strongman corporation uh, is going to put a put a power, uh, strongman event on in there at the same time yeah at the same time as the powerlifting meet so the these two buildings are adjacent they're probably 60 feet from each other uh with a walkway so uh we're awesome. kind of like a mini little fitness expo here in nowhere texas Man, that's got to feel good to bring something so cool like that to your town, your little town in Texas, man. I, I'm pumped for it. I, I really am. I think the putting the strong man out there, there's a chance I put some feelers out, maybe do a CrossFit event out on the dance floor, which is a big open concrete um, area outside. September in Texas is a crapshoot. It might be too hot. I don't know if they'll do it or not. But, um, you know, being able to bring 1,000 people, maybe 1,500 people to Coleman, I mean, it's definitely not bad for the local economy, right? Man, oh, I agree. We got uh, Curtis, who was the one who kind of put us all together. He's been commenting, and he was, again, saying that he loves the way you interact with the customers. And one of his favorite things that Pioneer does is, like you had mentioned, the short video requests on how to send off the belts they make. <laughs> And he's saying he's really disappointed. He's, uh, and I think Curtis, tell me if I'm wrong, but I think this is, um, Curtis is about to get shipped off back to uh, Ohio. He's based here in, with the Air Force here in Wichita Falls, but I, I believe he's going back to Ohio. And so he's service, talking, Curtis. Hey man, yeah, that, thank you, Curtis. That's one thing great about Kronos Strength. There's a lot of airmen who are in this group. I'm not airmen, but a lot of good people. And so he's, he's saying he doesn't, yeah, he is moving back to Ohio and he's disappointed. He probably won't be able to make this meet, but well, maybe we'll get to get together at the Arnold next year if they have it. Hey, there you go. Look at that. Um, man, uh, Matt, this is, this is what I got, man. I've, I've, we've gone through my, my list and talked about really shining a light on you and your family and, and this company that you've built worldwide um, so man, just thank you for taking the time. And is there any final thoughts, anything you'd like to send out there to the world? You know, just a, a huge thank you um, to all of the supporters and customers over the last eight years or over, I mean, over the last 40 years. Um, we wouldn't be able to do anything that we do without the support of y'all um, from my family, my work family, everybody that, you know, may make a dollar and be able to support their families that, that, that deal and do business with us on behalf of everybody. Thank you. And well, there you go, guys. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this episode. I definitely have. If you guys want to play it back, you can watch it on steady focused.com slash 92. It's going to be 92. You guys can of course pick it up on Spotify, Apple, YouTube, any of those good things like that. So, Man, I, I thank you so much, Matt, for coming on, spending a little bit of your time, your busy Christmas time with us. Guys, if you have not already, go pick yourself up a Pioneer Bell. What are you waiting on? Go go do it. Make it awesome. Make yourself the coolest person in the weight room. So, uh, but guys, you know, as always, I love you. If you found any value in this whatsoever, please share this with somebody. Tell somebody about this, about the stories that are coming through this channel. I love doing this. I love shining the light on the success, the struggle, the overcoming. And Matt has just been um, it is a great conversation. So, guys, anyway, until next time, I'm your host. I'm your number one, Mr. Simeon Hendricks. And this is Steady Focused.